Hey guys, and welcome back to another round of Let's Make Hybrids, a series dedicated to various artworks and sport creations created by the community based on animal hybrid prompts. In our previous prompt, we tackled Komodo dragons and orc whales, and for this week we've been playing with cobras and lionfish. We've already done part one, so if you haven't seen it already, I would really recommend stop watching this now, go take a look, there's so many amazing artists, and I guarantee you will not be disappointed. And speaking of part one, it turns out I did make one mistake, and that was that this submission we saw last week was actually by Apricot Mill. So Apricot, I am terribly sorry for the mix-up. Another user reposted to fix the angle, and I saw that one said the original. So my mistake, but like I said before though, I think it's a really cool dossier. I would recommend people pause, take a read, and the illustrations themselves are beautiful. And thus, with that cleared up, let us dive straight into our first one. The Leo Bravish by Guggenheim. The first time I looked at this one, it felt like I was looking at one of Arvelis' hyper-realistic Pokemon. Just the overall composition, the shading, the posing, everything about this is really cool. I love the textures, I really love the shading, and I think Guggenheim here did an absolutely fantastic job. It just looks so, so good. And next up we have Dragon33657 with another really cool and beautifully shaded and coloured piece here. I especially really love the fins and appendages going around the back, the sides, and the tail. They're so intricate, there's so much overlapping color and shades, and I think they did a fantastic job on this one as well. And following Dragon is Zerenzel, with another really badass piece. I especially really like the two different views of the head, how you see the open mouth on the left hand side and the closed mouth on the right. So it's really cool to see just how the mouth would actually open up. I really like the color palette. I think it gives it like a really cool abyssal look and I love the gradients and shading. And next up we have Sakasar with this beautifully intricate and stripey piece. Really, really got to give her credit for, you know, actually drawing every single stripe here. There's so many, it's so intricate and detailed. I think it looks really, really good. It just sells, you know, the lionfish vibe so well. Plus the background is also really lovely. And I really like the design of the hood and how it's sort of midway cobra hoods and lionfish appendages. And next up, we have a very sweet one by Jojo Wolf 04. I really like the color palette in this one. Nice coral shades and I really love the face as well. While the face has a nice happy grin, I also quite like actually the little flap of skin around, you know, the front of the canines. It just gives it an extra dynamic and I think it looks really cool. And I I also like the design of the appendages coming around where the torso kind of is. And next up we have a sport creation by Cod Gamer. Again, a big fan of the warm colour palettes. It really gives off a soft coral vibe. The spikes and horns are a nice touch and I really like that they've added in the animation in the form of the invisible leg there, which means that this would swim appropriately in the creature stage as an aquatic creature. Next up we have this amazing piece by Orloki. This is the kind of piece where you can just keep on staring and just see more and more detail. There's so much I can compliment on this piece. I love the contrast of the blue eyes and the blue Mouth. I love the different shades of colours, but in particular, it's the gold shading that's also to me. Not just around the underbelly, but all the different flecks of gold just everywhere. They're all just so unique. So much effort has been put into the lighting, the shading, and I think that Loki has done an absolutely jaw-dropping job. Really absolutely well done. The you, you can just see the sheer amount of passion and effort that went into this one. And next up we've got a sport creation by Shunky. This beautifully complex one. Really like the purple colour scheme. It's not something we've been seeing very often. And I love like just all the various different levels of detail gone into the various appendages, the fins, the frills. The tail in particular is beautiful and all around the hood and midsection. There's so many different bits and features to admire with this one. I think Shunky did a fantastic job of intertwining it all together. And next up we got a pen drawing by Fox Wyvern. I really like the posturing on this one. You can tell it was mid swimming around in the ocean and it's just made a sharp turn for that poor little squid there. It's really well represented by the bend in the neck. I also really like just the sheer amount of stripes as well, like again really selling that lionfish vibe. And judging by the size of the squid, I can imagine this thing being like an absolutely huge leviathan. And the overall structure of the face, it, like it looks like a very large reptilian head, really does sell like a bit more of a leviathan appearance. I can imagine this thing being an absolute monster. And following Fox Wyvern is Rosie with a sport creation. I'd like to draw attention to the appendages and the way that she designed them in this one, where they have these little red pieces on the tip of the spikes. I think that's a very interesting idea, it kind of gives the creature a bit of extra mass, and I can imagine it being a really cool intimidation display, or just a display in general. I also like the varied uses of parts to try and get different textures when it comes to the hood and frills. While more simple, I think this is a very sweet creation. And coming up next, we have another cute one by Super Chicken. 
I say cute, I think it's the big black beady eye to kind of get me. Something about the general head and face and the little almost horn-like appendages, just they're so cute to me. But I also really like the differing patterns on this one, how it's got spots around the hood and straps around the rest of the body. It does make for a nice variation and I'm once again really loving the way that the appendages are intertwined into the hood itself. Also the tail looks really cool as well. And up next we have Myrtle Nonin, with which I do believe is a Monster Hunter World reference of a King Wiggler. <laughs> <laughs> I do love the little commentary, but I also really like the model itself. I think the design is really good. Very reminiscent of that of the Wiggler, but you know, much more larger, more grandiose looking, fitting for a king. Also the color palette is again like a very interesting choice here. The black and purple and gray. It's very unique and I really like it. And also I really like the uh, big angry eyebrow and expression. <laughs> I think she's done a very good job with this one. And I really love the stripes. I think the variation of stripes and just general execution look fantastic. And next up, we got a portrait by DJ Raptor the Trash Raptor. I love how while it's a portrait and therefore it only encompasses the head, they've still gone through the effort of putting in so much detail and different colours and shades, and spots and stripes. There's a lot to take in with this one. And I think it really shows just the effort to put in. I also love the expression. I love the eyes. It kind of gives the look of a bit of a wiser, you know, perhaps more Leviathan or deity-like creature. I like this and I imagine it being an ancient, something much older, or perhaps even just a character. Either way, I think it's very well done. And next up, we have this adorable one by Blue Blaze. I really enjoyed the colour scheme on this one, and particularly the way that they have coloured in the stripes. How the stripes appear to have a white outline, but have splotches of green and yellow inside. It does give it like a bit more of a rustic, more natural appearance, since after all, not all animals or not all of nature is, you know, perfectly stripes. Sometimes they are a bit rough, a bit messy, and I do think that it comes out quite nicely in this. And I also like all the appendages and how they differ in coloration as well. And next up, we got this piece by Coco Cat 123. I do like the golden scales reflecting the rest of the red there. It really breaks it up and I think it's a nice touch. I absolutely love the appendages coming out from just ahead of the eyes and the little pink and yellow shades. That's a very nice subtle detail. And I really love the design of the hood. Another more transient sort of like more lionfish type of one, but a bit more of a threat display. It almost looks like peacock feathers in a way or a similar design, but much more bold and eye catching. Speaking of eye-catching, we have a very eye-catching piece here by Emma Enk. This one to me actually kind of feels like it has a black sun within the hood and almost meteor-like patterning coming out from the appendages. This creature to me just really makes me think of the apocalypse. It feels like it's some kind of deity or perhaps just a big scary monster and it feels like like an omen of doom. I'm not sure if it's intended or not. It's just the overall the patterning is done kind of gives me that impression. I think it's extremely clever. I think it's very, very well done. And of course, if not intended, I do think it's still a, a very creative design overall. I do really like as well how the colours kind of differ from each other between the hoods, the appendages and the body. It's good to see the variation in colour schemes. And I also really like the head as well. And next up, we got a digital beast by Zeppelin King. I really like all the spikes. So the spikes really kind of remind me of iguana spikes in a way, but in a much more sort of lionfishy type of theme and color scheme. I really love all the different features around the face, around the bottom jaw, the eyes. How it's got these big wispy bits on either side of the hood. I think this one's got like a little display, a lot of spikes. It looks kind of intimidating, especially the way it's kind of eyeing up the viewer. I think this one's a really cool and somewhat scary looking one. And next up, we've got a more elegant traditional sketch by Puffin25. Absolutely adore the shading on this one and I love all the scale work as well. And I really like just the way they're done at the various spines and appendages going along the spine and where the fins would be, like around the torso and hip kind of areas. They have like a very sharp but not too sharp appearance. Something about it just seems very elegant. Almost got a sea dragony, in fact. I just wish I could see a bit more of the ones around the head because I feel like that there's a lot more to show there and I'd really love to see it, but I do think that the entire thing, just the posture and the composition of the spines looks fantastic. And next up, we have a more abyssal piece by Sommy. I'll say abyssal, the dark color scheme and the nice, beautifully light fins and frills really make me think of some kind of deep sea creature. I absolutely adore that Sommy went with a more transparent appearance here. And I feel like that all the little flecks of light on the frills that just really sell the appearance so, so nicely. And also the contrasting light stripes around the rest of the body and how the body transitions from a dark shade all the way to the lighter brown. The entire thing is just such a beautiful contrast of colors. And I think I did such a fantastic job Job. It glows really well, it's very eye-catching, and I think it's beautiful. We also have another beautiful piece here by Zemi. This one is very neat and very well patterned. I like all the little gems coming around the belly, but not just the gems, but also the actual belly plates themselves. But the lines and the little circular scales, it just looks so neat. And that in conjunction with the kind of upwards pointing appendages around the hood, 
it really reminds me of an Emperor Leviathan from Subnautica, and it just gives like a much more royal kind of Empress look, especially the way that the head is slightly cocked away, but still looking towards the viewer at an angle. It just has like a very regal, royal kind of vibe to it. I also think that the stripes themselves are also very, very nicely done, a lot more mottled, but very well defined. Overall, this is a very, very beautiful piece. Coming up next, we got this really cool looking one by Savannah Dragon 0221. I absolutely love just the overall size of the appendages in this one. You can see that the creature itself is fairly delicate, but the appendages and the frills are just huge. And I can imagine it being just so graceful and looks so cool while it's swimming. I also love the varying patterns in the appendages themselves, how it transitions from a simple circle towards the base into circles of more rings further out. Also these stripes on the head cresting and the tail. And I also really like the eye. I just want to pay attention to the eye for a moment and just say that it's very, very well drawn, very piercing. It's got a nice bit of shine of light. I'm very almost missed out, but I think it's a nice touch. And of course, all the little blue, almost tentacly like filament kind of things come around the gills. It's another subtle but really nice touch. I really respect how as large and you know domineering as the frills and appendages are, they still apply you know, the right amount of attention to other features like the face and the body. It shows a great consistency of detail and focus, and I think that is very valuable. And up next, we've got a spooky Abyssal one by Cortify. Now for this one, I think that the overall sort of rough nature of the drawing and how everything's a little blurry actually kind of sells really well in this scenario because you can tell it's a deep sea creature. Like this is really deep in the ocean. You've got the light source from the diver there and how the creature itself kind of blends into the mists and how the creature itself kind of blends into the darkness. It kind of gives like a bit of a vibe that the camera used or the photo taken was like either mid motion or low quality or just, you know, or something to that effect. And it just kind of adds to the mystery of this creature. Speaking of which, I do also really like how the mid section is really dark and it camouflages well into the environment, but it still has like all these piercing light appendages and the white outline, which I can imagine in the deep ocean while camouflaging, all those different features being really quite disorientating or confusing to, to potential prey and to the poor diver. The choice of colors in this one are very clever and I think it looks really nice. And following Cortify is Hazilla with this wicked kaiju piece. I can definitely see some Ghidorah vibes in this one. It just looks so, so cool. And I really love how the two tails kind of appear behind it. I really love Hazilla's job of the scales and how instead of being drawn onto the creature, they're actually a part of the creature in which they show a bit of 3D, the way they're flacked outwards and actually affects the overall silhouette of the creature. I think that's a very nice touch and kind of gives it like a bit more of a spiky, almost more wild appearance, more monster-like. The face is gorgeous, the subtle details run running down the back of the neck. And of course, a little capture at the bottom there of what I think is the two other heads. Again, really having Ghidorah vibes here. <laughs> I think it looks really cool. Coming up next is the Serpentine Power Coil by Doom Soul. This is a ridiculously unique and really cool modded piece in Spore. He is very well known for his insane mech creations. And this here, guys, is a really good example. Especially for more organic creature, which is kind of cool to see from him. Now, I'm not very confident with mech, so my terminology here may be a little bit off. But I do absolutely adore the power core around the center where the heart would be. I think the little green effect there is a fantastic job. Also around the hood is a really cool interpretation of appendages, but also done in the form of steam jets and gas tanks, I believe, the little white ones. I love all the cabling. I love all the different layers of sort of like just mechanical parts around, like again, around the chest cavity. The head is really open to interpretation, but the two large yellow spikes just really sell fangs. And I think that alone is enough to instill some intimidation. And I also like just the strong structure of the rest of the body. It's very clearly defined, very clean, and it does a good job of selling a strong mechanical beast. This is really unique, and I think it's done a fantastic job. Coming up next, we got the Teroise Serpentes by Jack Solly. Now, like last time, Jack has gone with another sort of literal hybrid, whereas so far, most of us are kind of using, you know, creative and imaginary concepts to mash the two animals together. Jack has been really focusing on what happens if you biologically, literally fuse the creatures, and therefore it creates this really interesting sort of midway designs. Particularly the mouth, I think, is a really interesting one, since, after all, snakes do kind of break their mouths open anyway, and that in conjunction with their fish heads, I could imagine it, yeah, like, definitely creating some kind of vacuum effect, as it would have, like, a lot of capabilities with the jaw. And it also makes sense that the curb hood would deteriorate in such a merge, but in this case, still used somewhat for swimming. And I do just want to note the colour scheme. I do think that the colour scheme is very well done and I just really like the shading and also just a very subtle light outline around the darker stripes. Following next is Jenna Pothier. And one quick thing I do want to note with this one is that it is absolutely incredible seeing Jenna's progress throughout the last three hybrids. There's been an absolutely huge jump in quality, just her designs in general. 
And Jenna, I just really want to commend you on your progress. I think it looks absolutely fantastic. This one is really eye-catching. I absolutely love the concept. I think you've done a very, very good job of capturing the Leviathan which is also capturing the ship, pun unintended. It's really cool to see like a more actually kind of design here. I absolutely love the face. I really like the color palette and the design of the stripes, especially around the hood and how it kind of intertwines with the rest of the body. And the tail itself looks really cool. This is a very exciting piece in regards to the action. And I just really like the detail going on here. And coming up next, we got a piece by Alice Bill. I absolutely love your choice of shading. That technique is really, really cool. It's sort of like a... I wouldn't even know how to describe it. The shading is very, very stripy, but in such a way that really looks good. It gives the creature a really nice texture. Not to mention, you know, it kind of draws my eye in. I just want to inspect every little corner and nook and cranny. Not to mention the creature itself. The creature itself looks very elegant. It really gives me a bit of a Pokemon vibe. I think it might be a gem around the head. I'm not sure, but it does look just really nice and regal. I really like the design of the fins, especially around where the hips would be. I think that's just such a beautifully executed design. And again, in conjunction with the shading, I think it looks really, really good. And coming up next, we've got this really cute little sketch by Space Dragon. I do really like how the pair of these contrast so much. The upper right hand corner kind of looks like a, a bit more of an abyssal creature. There's something more aggressive, more eel-like. I really like the design around the eyes and the mouth. Whereas the bottom left hand one, while it's got like a very distinct snake head, the rest of the body feels almost pufferfish-like. Which I'm not sure if it was intended, I think it just might be the design of the hood, but it just, I can't help but imagine it being a sort of puffer fish with the, you know, these large lionfish features. And it's actually really cool, but the head is adorable. As I said, it's really cool seeing the two different designs contrast, and I do wonder if one is, you know, a different angle of the other. Following Space Dragon is the Toroi's Hana by Lunar Eclipse. Another awesome dossier piece. I really like the warm colour palette on this one, but I also really like how the appendages along the back really contrast in terms of colour schemes and how they all sort of flare outwards. Also the simplicity of the fins is an interesting touch, although I do like how they have like a darker shade in the middle of each fin, and a bit of a semi-transparent look, which is always a really nice extra touch. And I can also see how around the tail it's got like a bit of a larger mass, which is also kind of interesting. Oh, I love the face, I think the face is adorable. And coming up next is Ghost Nico 77, with this really cool piece. I do just want to note how you've highlighted every single individual scale, and I think that was actually a really good choice because it makes the entire thing just feel all the more vibrant and vivid. It's really eye-catching, it really adds a lot of definition. I can imagine that taking quite a long time, but I think it was a very, very good choice and it just makes the entire thing really pop out so much more. I also really like the contrasted colours here, how you've gone with both, you know, the warm oranges, but also the darker, more cooler teals, which has a very interesting effect. I think the head is beautifully done and the frills as well. The tail, again, I love the tail added to it. It just adds like a really nice highlight. And I do feel like that every color is really emphasized beautifully by the individual highlighted scales. Really nice touch and really well done. Ooh, up next, we've got this rather spooky looking one by Little Gummy. The glowing eyes are really nice. The overall shading and lighting on this one in conjunction with the glowing eyes and the very spiky hood goes to like a very kind of actually intimidating display. And I think it is very, very well executed, especially how the midsection is just slightly shaded, especially like around the inner hood. It's very, very effective and very well done. And I do also just love the lionfish texture going along the body. Very neat and well executed. I think it's a very beautiful, but yeah, definitely intimidating piece. And up next is this gorgeous design by Rubina Dragon. I really, really love just the overall design on this one. It really makes me think of like a very old school oriental kind of like Japanese or Chinese art. It really looks like an oriental dragon to me, but of course it isn't. It's a lionfish cobra, and I think Rubina's done an absolutely amazing job of just nailing that style. It looks so neat, especially, can I just say, the little hoop around the tail. It sounds silly, but little loops like that are normally very hard to pull off, and I think that she's done an absolutely stunning job. It just looks very, very well done, very neat. Not too squashed, not too wonky, just perfect. The stripes are beautiful, and in conjunction with the highlighted scales, like we mentioned before, again, really makes the whole thing pop out. And the face is stunning, especially that angry eye, and really, again, something that more Chinese vibe. Coming up next is the Copian Snake by Silver Light. I really love all the different information on this one, the different angles and views, the little facts chart, how you get to see the size and the water feature in the upper right hand corner, the teeth on the left, the resting position, which is also a Jowie variant, which is really, really cool. I love that. 
You can tell a lot of thought has gone into this one and I think it is fantastically done. I also really like the markings around the eyes and the barbs on the belly is an interesting touch. And I also like the blending of colours and shading around the belly and around the eye. And as a little bonus piece for Silverlight, we also have this really cool composition which features two lionfish cobra hybrids, one by a nest and one in the lake. We've also got a orca komodo in the waterfall up above and we have a jowy, which is <laughs> really adorable. I like how it's overseeing the nest. This is adorable. Thank you very much, Silverlight. And coming up next, we've got this beautiful piece by Draculady, a very regal design. I really like the different colour schemes, especially how the darker head and hoods kind of suddenly break apart into a much lighter palette along the rest of the body. And I really think that the white stripes are a very, very clever touch. The way that they feature on the appendages, but also continue onto the body around the back and chest is a subtle but very, very nicely done idea. It really adds so much focus and so much emphasis to the spikes and fins, and it gives it a rather unique pattern of stripes overall. As I said, it's subtle, but very clever and very well done. It gives her a very striking appearance. And I love the face. Draki always does such great faces in her artwork. Speaking of, here's another piece with her hybrid, featuring one of her own characters. So you get to see the overall size of it, and it's in a more relaxed pose, in this case acting as a pet. And once again, you can see the white stripes, they really do highlight it very well, and I just think it looks absolutely beautiful. Really lovely work. Following Dracula Lady is Frostbite with another cute design. I love the simplicity of this one. It's got a nice focused, almost thoughtful expression. I like the little subtle gills and the detailing on the hood, and I really like the appendages come around the hood as well and along the back of the body and the tail. It's got a much more snake dominant appearance, but the appendages do a good job for, you know, making it more aquatic. Last bunch of little bubbles as well. And I really like the design of the mouth. I do find the expression itself though is very catching. And coming up next, we've got Empiric with this really cool and moody submission. I like how the overall atmosphere really interferes with the creature itself, like all the light shafts. It kind of really makes it blend into the ocean more. And by having the light shafts kind of obscure some parts of it, it makes others, such as the left hand side of the tail, it makes the vibrancy of the colours really pop out more in contrast, which is a very clever lighting trick. Really nicely done. Saying that, I also like the colours themselves, and particularly around the tail fin. I think it looks very beautiful and vibrant. Very catching, again, with the white stripes. And the head as well. I like the posture of the head. I like the bright open mouth. And I really love the horns along the eyes. And up next we go finally with another submission that really does a great job of playing with lighting and submerging the creatures into the ocean. Again, a really fantastic job of the environment. It sells aquatic fantastically well. Not to mention the creature itself. I love all the different varied stripes, such as around the midsection of the body and the hood. The eyes as well are very piercing. I love the scale work around the face, the stripes around the eyes, and the little appendages around the eyebrows. And I also really like the setting of how it's protecting its nest in the rocks. But I must say, the background and the lighting is really well done. Really fantastic work, especially in all the little bubbles. And up next, we've got Lady Terraja by the Hikiri. Now, while Hikiri did mention didn't really have much time to do this, I do think they still did a fantastic job regardless. You can see some subtle patterning around the body and the frills. They describe this as being a sort of queen or more royal creature, and it kind of shows in the mysteriousness, especially in the way that the face is partially obscured. But the purple eyes really pop out and just do a very good job of just selling royalty. Also the light colour palette. At a first glance, I look at this and I think of some sort of very mysterious forest spirit. And the more I look into it and see the patterns, the more it sells that vibe. While subtle, I do think this is very beautiful. Coming up next is Silent Gamer with their Labra Snake. I really love the construction of the head on this one. There's a lot of emphasis on the overall shape and I think it's very well defined. It looks very rugged and, well it says Labra versus Kajira and I was about to say it looks very kaiju-like, very monsterish. I also really like the back fin coming around the neck and also all the spikes as well. It really sells that kaiju appearance. Also the scars along the eyes is an interesting touch as well. And up next we have this sweet and simple piece by Pickle Juice. I really like the design of the mouth and the little whisker kind of bits coming out. I also love the ruffled design of the hood and the fins and tail fin have a really nice striking contrast compared to the rest of the body. It's a wonderful more simple design. Following Pickle Juice is Zumpo123 with this really cool Leviathan looking piece. I really like the appendages coming around the eyes and face and the subtle little patternings on them I think is really nice. I also really like how all the patterning stripes have this really subtle white outline. It really makes the blue pop out so much more, especially around the head but also around the rest of the body. I absolutely love the design of the fins 
how the fins do have this semi-transparent look, but also how the fingers, if you will, are so well defined as well. The frames that support the membrane of the fin. And I also just want to note actually is how the head is a lot smaller in proportion to the rest of the body, which is actually a very interesting touch. It kind of reminds me of a plesiosaur in a way. And due to that, it makes me feel like this creature would be very, very large. It's a really nice touch and I really do just love how the appendages look. They're very striking and bold. And that's for our final submission by the Plaguebringer. We have the Serpentus Panthera with this absolutely stunning design. I really love the bright contrast and stripes. We've got the reds, the whites, and the cyans. I really like the whiskers coming off the snout and just how well defined that is in terms of colors as well as design. And I really love how they defined the hood in the form of the appendages and fins. It looks really cool and sells a very nice aquatic vibe. I do think that the color palette on this one really makes a stand out and it looks absolutely fantastic. And there we have it everyone. That concludes the Lionfish Cobra prompt. We've had in total well over 80 submissions. I'm, I hope I didn't take too long, but I have been trying to get through them and give everyone, you know, the attention and spotlight that they deserve. Thank you all so, so much for participating. The overall variety in these ones has been absolutely stunning and it is just amazing to see. Now then, for the long coveted next prompt, which I know many of you have been waiting for and I really thank you for your patience. The next one is a vulture and a scorpion, our first insect one. This is another one with some interesting potential. Is it gonna be a chimera? Is it gonna be something scary or perhaps something elegant? Will it be a predator or a scavenger? Will it be airborne or groundbound? And of course, will it have feathers or will it have armor? As always, I'm really looking forward to seeing everyone's interpretations of this one. And of course, if you'd like to take part and submit, you can do so in many ways. You can submit your artworks to the Let's Make Hybrids channel in my Discord server. You can email me, as seen on the screen. You can post your submissions in the YouTube comment section. You can tweet me on Twitter, or you can message me on DeviantArt. Anywhere that you can contact me and I can see it. There are a lot of ways that you can submit. So as always, everyone, thank you all so much. Absolutely loving this project and everyone being so excited to take part. And as always, I will see you all next time. Cheers.